Hello, my friends. It is 2019. This is the first video I have made of the, for the new year, and I have been very lazy, and hopefully we'll break that streak right about now. So I slept in late today and decided that it's time to do a video while I have the house to myself. That's always the encounters I have to pick when I attempt to do any sort of video. So I'm going to kick the year off with a video for women with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, I get contacted by people who have difficulty losing weight, and sometimes for all sorts of crazy reasons, but by far the most difficult struggles for weight loss come for women with PCOS, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. It is a metabolic hangup where the body usually produces too much testosterone, and this complicates the metabolic absorption of sugar and slows down the metabolism and causes women in particular to gain and maintain weight. So I have worked now with several women in my professional program with uh, women who truly have a hard time losing weight. People ask me about who has the most difficulty losing weight. It's not hypothyroid people, not, not in the number one spot. It is ladies with PCOS. So this video is for you. Follow these eight points that I am about to give. Number one, avoid meats and fats nearly at all cost. This doesn't mean you have to be purely vegan, but if you are, it helps. Uh, the advice here is make your meat consumption about 10% or less. Uh, the biggest problem that ladies keep having is they go to people like Berg and this guy, this YouTuber Berg, who's not a doctor, by the way, uh, he, and he convinces everybody that they have trouble absorbing sugars. Actually, the problem is if, you, if you're trying to restrict sugars and your body's trying to hold on to them. So don't buy into this sort of silliness that everybody is diabetic and everybody is out of control. It's just not true. And you're going to find if you make peace with sugar, you're going to do a lot better than if you try to avoid it at all costs. And, and ladies, y'all are the worst. You've been talked into this low-carb business for so long that it actually hurts you. So get rid of meats and fats or keep them to about 10% or less. That's number one. You're going to find that if you adjust to that or try to adjust to that as carefully as you can, you're going to have better luck losing weight because the vegans are actually right on this. The people with the biggest waistlines are meat eaters. And it's, it's really true. And yeah, yeah, I'm not a vegan, so you, and you guys know that if you watch this channel. So I'm saying that in an unbiased capacity, but I have seen the experience. I have seen, seen this work for people. Number two, eat almonds, if not daily, every other day. Uh, almonds are great, and I don't necessarily mean roasted versus raw versus any. Eat any almonds, uh, just a couple, like between six and eight a day. They are very high in fat, so you don't want to eat too many of them. But they do provide selenium and other nutrients that work well with a PCOS and a hypothyroid body. Now, keep in mind, I've never liked almonds until recently I developed a taste for them. I love them. I feel better when I eat them. They are the healthiest type of nut. And if you are the type to do raw almonds, that's always very good. Number three, supplement with licorice root. This can be a supplement or it can be tea. Uh, you can do licorice root tea. Um, or you can, again, supplement if it's easier for you. Ladies, this is the biggest tip that you will get because it regulates the amount of and balances the amount of testosterone versus estrogen, which is where you have your problem. I have worked with one lady in particular recently who was not seeing results, and then she, she started supplementing. She doubled the normal recommended dose of uh, just a typical now licorice root supplement that she got off of Amazon, and she's seeing nearly a full, whole another pound loss per week. So supplement with licorice root. This is one of the most recommended supplements for ladies with, hypo, with uh, PCOS. Number four, supplement with inositol. This is another one that does the same thing or similar to uh, licorice root. It helps regulate um, testosterone levels. And again, women, the problem is they're having too high of testosterone levels, which is it's not agreeing with their their metabolism and their body's natural makeup, their natural tendency to produce progesterone and estrogen. So that's what's causing these symptoms. 
uh, inositol is another good one. I don't have too much time today, so I'm not going to break down why that's a good idea. Number five, chamomile tea, another all-time great for uh, people with uh, PCOS. Chamomile tea has the same positive effects as licorice root and inositol. Number six, ginger tea. Now, ginger is one of those things that is gosh darn near magical in its capability, in its immune capabilities, but it also helps to normalize your blood levels. Number seven, pomegranate and beet juice. Uh, you can do both or you can do one or the other, but this is one of the best juices and it happens to be one of the, lo they, they happen to be lowest in sugar and they get, have a, a much slower insulin release. And that's why you can drink pomegranate juice and if you can stand it or beet juice. Um, even if you have difficulties with your blood sugar levels, this are, these are the best types of juices that you can have at the meal. And you can have a good tall, normal size, 20 ounce glass and your body will still react positively. A lot of, again, a lot of women are struggling because they've been taught that sugar is evil and it just isn't. But if you're worried about it, or if you have a weakness, or if you happen to have something like diabetes, pomegranate and beet juice are some of the best juices that you can have that don't have a negative blood sugar reaction. And number eight, fennel tea. Fennel tea is something I have developed a taste for. It has a licorice taste, and I don't like licorice at all, personally. But it's it has a very clean flavor and if you have not had it you just take the seeds you boil them in water put them in a like a little strainer and then boil them in water and then take them out and you will have fennel tea and you only have to boil them 10 minutes but it is one of the best and it, it does have phytoestrogen so you don't want to do it too often but it is it is one of truly the most the best things you can do even if you're a man and and you happen to be watching this and you don't have any struggles with PCOS, it is still one of the best things you can do. If you're holding water, and a lot of ladies with PCOS, they have problems with the amount of water they store. But this also, again, works for men. And if you want to, uh, here's another tip, if you want to combine this with uh, dandelion tea, those are very powerful diphenyl tea and then dandelion tea. You can just put them in the same thing and make an actual thing like I do sometimes, and you will kill your water retention, unnecessary water retention, without feeling bad. Uh, you don't get the negative effects of caffeine. Uh, fennel tea doesn't have caffeine. Dandelion tea, the, the caffeine is almost non-existent. And so you're not going to cause your heart to race. You're not going to stress out your body in any way. Uh, so combine these tips, and you're going to find that in your OMAD journey, those of you who are metabolically resistant, you are app to try this and you're going to see great results nonetheless. So yeah, I haven't spent much time on these, but if you want to break down, do a search about fennel tea, F-E-N-N-E-L, uh, licorice root, inositol. Do, you're going to find that there's a lot of research on this, but I discovered this accidentally because you guys know I don't trust nutritionists and I don't trust dietitians. Most of them don't know what they're talking about, but I have seen ladies, uh, come off of our sessions and spend two weeks and then email me back and say, I've started to have results when we followed this advice. So for those of you with PCOS, don't get discouraged. You will lose slower than those without it, but you will see results. Same thing with hypothyroid. You can try the same tips and you'll have better blood sugar, better insulin sensitivity, thanks to stuff like fennel tea and ginger tea. Beware, one quick tip, ginger tea and fennel tea will lower your blood sugar pretty drastically. And I'm going to do a separate video that I keep saying I'm going to do on OMAD for diabetics, and we're going to talk about using those teas to lower blood sugar pretty fast. But you don't want to overdo these teas because what you're going to find is they do they can cause you to drop very quickly and your, your body will may or may not be able to adjust. One of the side effects of, of dropping blood sugar too quickly is you're going to be starving and you're going to have a harder time fasting. So don't give up fasting for those of you who have had a hard time. You can succeed. It will just takes a little bit of improvising. And then once your body gets adjusted to what you're doing, you're going to start seeing the weight loss results. Especially ladies, you're going to go through these plateaus where you don't, where three weeks go by and you don't lose. That is normal. Not just ladies, men too. Uh, I've had 
five people this week contact me and say it's been three weeks I haven't lost weight. Sometimes that's the case because your body lacks the capacity to figure out what you're doing and it doesn't want you it doesn't want to go into your fat stores because you've had that fat for freaking years and your body's not going to naturally start eating into its storage because you've you've taught it not to you've always taught your body that you're going to go back out and binge and break and start storing fat again and if you stay consistent you're not going to have to worry about that so have a good day and i'll see you again on the next video